What if we never discovered electricity? Well, the easy answer is that we'd be living in a way similar to the times before we originally harnessed electricity's power. We'd have appliances powered by gas, and there would be a lot more fire around. But this hypothetical could run even deeper than that, so let's get into it. Humans are a very curious species, always interested in advancing our capabilities, constantly trying to find new ways to innovate and get things done faster, more efficiently, and most effectively. But if it wasn't for Benjamin Franklin and his kite, would we have ever grabbed hold of this opportunity to make use of the vast potential of electricity? Maybe. Maybe we'd still be gazing up at a lightning storm believing that Zeus is simply in a bad mood. Or maybe not. The probability of us never having discovered electricity is extremely low. If the people we know to have innovated the most with electricity never did what they did, there would simply have been another group of scientists a few years later who probably would have. All this to say, the odds are that if one person didn't discover electricity, somebody else surely would have at some point down the line. There's actually evidence suggesting that the Greeks first explored the notion of electrical charge over 2600 years ago. Their experiment had fossilized tree resin or amber rubbed against animal fur which would attract dried grass, hence static electricity. Ancient Egyptians also knew about certain species of electrical fish and even used the electric Nile catfish's electrical properties to treat headaches and nerve pain. Sure, but what about Benjamin Franklin and everyone who might have come after him you ask? Would you believe it if I told you that Benjamin Franklin wasn't actually the first person to successfully harness the power of electricity? Well, you better because because a month before he did his kite trick, there were a number of scientists across Europe experimenting with lightning in the same way. What Franklin became famous for was only in his fascination with lightning and his theory that it was actually a form of static electricity. He was correct of course, and this notion traveled overseas, as multiple other European and Russian scientists got busy with their own experiments. French scientist François d'Alembert used a 50 foot long vertical rod to attract the lightning, or as he called it, electric fluid. On May 10, 1752, his experiments were a success and were then replicated by a number of other scientists, including Russian chemist Mikhail Lomonosov, with similar results. This came only one month before Ben Franklin tied a key to a kite and tried his own version of this experiment. And it's also understood that Franklin didn't know anything of these other experiments overseas and that his kite trick was simply a natural progression of his mounting interest in lightning as a form of static electricity. He was able to acquire a charge through the twine of his kite and harness some power in a Leyden jar which is an antique component which can harness an electrical charge. Basically a very early version of a battery. So this was quite impressive and definitely a step up from his European counterparts, but he certainly wasn't the only one toying with electricity in this way. So what is this all telling us? Sure, people have been observing electricity for a long time, but what if today we still hadn't understood the full potential of it? What if we'd never been able to get to the point where we could invent the light bulb or the first computer or the first Wi-Fi router? Well, one thing's for sure, we wouldn't miss it. Meaning, if we didn't know the potential we were missing out on, we'd still be chugging along with life and technology in the only ways we knew how. Gas and steam power would most likely be the driving force of all our technology. And we'd probably still have figured out the engine, which would help us a lot. There are also gas powered refrigerators even today, so we'd have that covered. There would be a lot we could do with gas. And further, with all our innovation hinging on alternative sources of power, humans would still take advantage of those resources to reach the same goals. So a good alternative question to be asked would be, if electricity wasn't available, what would the world be like? What would we have been able to do with gas, steam, open flame, solar power, geothermal energy, and etc.? And the answer is quite a lot. The world would be very different still, but would it be regressed to any significant degree? I don't think so. It would just be very different. Hot air balloons would probably be a bigger deal. Air travel may have functioned more crudely and less efficiently without electricity, but then again, maybe not. Because just imagine what 275 years of innovation would do when our sights aren't set on electricity as our primary source of power. Okay, fine, there would be no iPhones, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, or telephones, or computers. But for example, we could have still developed light bulbs. Fluorescent lights function by igniting a contained gas with a constant source of energy, and ignition can be done with flame, just less efficiently. 
So who knows, maybe an alternate dimension version of an LED screen could have been invented that was powered without the need for electricity. I couldn't imagine how that would work exactly, but then again, I don't think Benjamin Franklin knew how LED screens would come to be when he first let his kite fly. Or ever fathomed the concept that his little Leyden jar would eventually lead to you watching this moving audiovisual presentation on your handheld magic box in less than 300 years. That's the beauty of human innovation. And this video isn't asking what would happen if humans weren't capable of innovation. It's in a way asking, how would people have innovated without access to electricity? Which I find is a much more exciting way to explore the question than to simply assume we'd be riding in horse-drawn carriages, reading poetry on parchment by candlelight. Alright, that's today's video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more of Life's Biggest Questions, posted daily.